So number 238, okay. I'm gonna put this over here. Give me a second to do an audio okay. check. Uh, Twitch has not caught up quite yet, which is unfortunate. Okay, cool. We're good now. We're good. Okay. So, okay, 238. You ready? Indeed. Let's do it. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 238 of the Security Podcast here on In30. This is, uh, I guess, week number three of quarantine. Stay at home. Tom's giving a thumbs up for that. So... Uh, I don't know what you've been doing. I've been cleaning a lot. I've been unearthing different things, uh, finding my old Eagle Scout stuff and everything else. So that's what I've been really doing, cleaning up. I've been distantly learning with my son. So I, uh, I guess we're going to have to start over. Oh, <laughs> all right. Oh, no. Whoops. Just a second. Hi. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and make sure that uh, we can put you on the right spot on Twitch. I mean, you could put uh, your wife, uh, your your wife, uh, playing Animal Crossing instead. <laughs> I could. All right, so we have flipped the cameras. We should be, we should be good there. Cool, we're good. Okay, ready? Yep. Everything deleted. Well, we'll have to chop up this portion yeah. of the video, but yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm talking about audio. Just restart your audacity. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, ready? Indeed. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 238 of the Security Podcast here on In30. Uh, I guess uh, Tom and I have both been uh, quarantined for about three weeks now. Uh, I guess we're good to go, but we're still, uh, f as they call it, hashtag flattening the curve. So we, we suggest everyone stay inside. So you heard us last talking about little projects you can do. I didn't really take up people on those projects because I had to distantly learn with my son. I, uh, I hope everyone is distance learning with their kids. They're learning how uh, awesome teachers are and how hard they've been working and because I had to call them up and they called me up and they said, uh, how's it going? I said, wow, you gave a lot of work. And they're like, yeah, we're still learning what's the appropriate amount of work. And we had a long conversation and everything else. So, so kudos, big thumbs up to all the elementary school teachers, especially the kindergartners and the first grade teachers teaching kids how to read remotely. And I don't want to hear any more about how people don't know how to use all the telemeeting software because I'll tell you one thing. My six-year-old figured it out. He figured out the space bar. He figured out when to talk. He, he raises his hand when he has something to say. I'm telling you, if you can't figure it out, it is a you problem. Let's bring in Tom. Hi, Tom. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So how's your, uh, I, I don't know, I, I don't think you guys use Zoom, you use something else? Yes, we, we do not use Zoom. Uh, we, we do use something else. Um, yeah, it's, it's been all remote work for me. Uh, I am, I'm part of the, the small number of lucky employees uh, across the world right now whose job can be done completely remotely. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a programmer for the most part. I do a lot of stuff, but mostly programming. And, you know, a, a terminal here at home with a keyboard that kind of looks like this is really the same at home or in the office. So uh, VPN in and uh, code away. That's all I've been doing. Uh, that and I have been practicing uh, good, safe social distancing with the help of Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal and Half-Life Alex. Three games in three days just dropped on my plate, and I've got the next several weeks to just enjoy these games. So, uh, I mean, yeah, no human contact for me. I mean, that, that's a good idea. They're canceling movies and everything. All the game studios should be rushing just to drop everything out. So we have a lot of good things to play. Now, I don't really play games, but one of the activities uh, my kid's school said to do was uh, something enjoyable. So now my son now knows what Mario Kart is. And it's, I, I it's fantastic. And 
Uh, if you have enough Joy Cons, then it works perfectly for multiplayer. If you've got a bunch of kids around, yeah. uh, you know, just six feet apart. Six yes. feet apart. Six Absolutely. Feet apart. Six, Six feet, feet apart. apart. Uh, it will. It will also prevent the uh, the blood baths when somebody gets a star at just the most inopportune moment and destroys you on Rainbow Road through no skill of their own and ruins your best lap time. Not that I'm salty about that, but it has happened. What I have said is, if you ever want to hear my wife curse, is uh, play Mario Kart with her. That is when you find people's true colors when that blue shell hits you at the finish line. <laughs> Mario Kart just destroys families. But if you're quarantined with nothing better to do, it is a fantastic option. That and Smash Brothers. I've never gotten into the Pokemon or the Smash. Um, for me, it's uh, straight up Mario Kart. My son did ask, can we play the game where the red guy uh, has to eat the mushroom? So I turned him on to Mario 1. And Nuts. I never had the clock issue, but he has the clock issue. He dies based on time. Yep. That that I that I don't understand. Maybe I, I don't remember when I what age I was when I had Mario, but I, I figured that out fairly quickly. So he's getting it and and we're good. So so our main topic today is privacy with all these apps. So obviously all of a sudden you get a work order, stay home, work. And the first thing is now you realize that your job can be done at home. A lot of people were like, how am I going to do this? And then you find out this can be done at home. But a lot of the companies that we're going to talk about said, hey, we want to help out. So big, big kudos to them, like Zoom, like Google Meet, like Microsoft Teams, like Slack. All these companies have reached out, ABC Mouse for the education and said, here, here's our stuff for free for whatever, 90 days, 120 days. Go use it. And I've never heard the word Zoom being used so many times. And not that they're bad, but we're going to talk about how we're we sh you should be worried about your privacy. And it is a real thing to worry about, especially when all these things are free. So I'll get into it. And the, my son's school said, go to this uh, website. I think it's Read Words or Read Works and make an account. I'm like, I would really? They want you just to make an account and do it? Like. I'm not concerned that they're stealing my son's reading habits on these SAT passages that he's doing. But you know what? You're sending information or go to Khan Academy and sign up. It's like, uh, like I like Khan Academy. I use Khan Academy. There's nothing really malicious about them. But you're asking somebody who's six and their parents just to sign up randomly for this stuff. And you really don't know what's going on. Yeah, and, and you know, how much vetting can you actually be guaranteed that these places went through to, you know, make sure that the software is good or they, they have a good privacy policy or that they're even able to uh, accept and deal with minors, right? A, a lot of websites have got a strictly, you know, 18 and above, uh, you know, clause in their terms of service simply because there are certain legal protections, at least, you know, here in the States and other places around the world for minors. If you are under the age of majority, typically 18, depending on where you live, uh, then, you know, you can't sign a contract. You can't enter into a, a legally binding arrangement with one of these companies. And uh, a lot of companies just throw up their hands and say, yeah, we're not dealing with kids. It's a whole lot of extra legal paperwork. And we're just, we're absolving ourselves of all of it. Uh, kids don't use our platforms. But then you have stuff like this that happens in the world and uh, all of a sudden you need to accept everyone. So I'll, so the loophole is, because I, I, I did look into this for something, is so COPPA, the Child Online Privacy Protection Act, protects children under a, uh, the age of 13. So if you're a COPPA compliance site, you cannot c collect any information, like none whatsoever. So the way you get around it is you need your parents, and I'm not joking you, to fax in like a permission slip, like they need to have it on file. Now, maybe they've changed it now to digital or whatever else, but it's, they need a parent oversee, oversight on this. And I'll get into Khan Academy in a second. So these websites, like, how, how do you do it? So like you said, they just absolve themselves. But if you have kids and you want to make your platform available, so what a lot of, a lot of websites say is, hey, if you're a school, you, it's your job to comply with COPPA, not ours. We will try our best, but it's ultimately your responsibility. So that's how they absolve themselves. And then the school says, hey, go to website X, Y, and Z and uh, do this assignment. 
And so because they claim to vet it, that unfortunately becomes the problem. Now, what Khan Academy did, and I really big thumbs up to Khan Academy. I really like them. If you want to learn math, big thumbs up. SATs, all that good stuff. They they made my son create an account. We put him as a minor. Uh, they uh, they didn't ask for any personal. They asked for his name, and they said, we're using your name to say hi to you. That's good. What's your parents' email? My parent. <laughs> I got an email that what I, I didn't do is I didn't send it to me. I sent it to his email address, which he's not supposed to have, but whatever. Um, I get his email and then I have to, ver obviously I have to verify it. And then I have to create my own account and I have to associate the two accounts together. So that was good. What I did like is my son saw the email and said, hey, can you read this to me? My son asked to, for me to read him the privacy policy. <laughs> That is and, fantastic. And, and I said, son, we don't read these. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do we say to the uh, the privacy policy? Not today. No, nobody cares. So, so, yes, they did. So a lot of these sites are, in fact, trying to do the right thing. A lot of these sites. So the reason coming from as a school teacher, the reason the teachers assign this is for the most part, you want the teachers to curate all these stuff. So these lists of all these websites that are free and available to use, they're not all good. It's like if it said this New York Smithsonian is showing you stuff. Yeah, you can probably do it. You figure it out. It's good. But there's just so much stuff. So if your teacher is saying do this, trust the teachers on this case that that they're probably pretty good. Um in this case, yes, we are signing up for different web services that we're not like totally thrilled with, but for the most part, it's we, we there's ob an obvious problem, and we try to give as little information as possible. So, yeah. So the um, the EFF put out a, a really nice list. Uh, what you know about online tools during the COVID nineteen crisis, uh, and they go through some of the more popular ones here, and it's. It's a pretty good article. Uh, now, it doesn't give you hard directives of do this, don't do this, use this thing, don't use this thing, right? It's not like the, the messaging uh, privacy scorecard that they put out a, a few years back, but um, it does give you some decent information. And I, I am fully aware that um, you know you might not have a choice in the matter of using these tools, right? Your company might center on something that could be good or bad or probably somewhere in between. Um, and especially with schools, uh, just like you were saying, you know, you're not really going to have an option to say, uh, no, I, I don't want to use this particular service or this site because it's just what the class has to do. So I, I get it. It's difficult out there, but uh, there's just some stuff you should probably be aware of. Well, so the first thing that, that came up was, uh, and actually we were going to do this here is, uh, is Zoom. So we spoke about Zoom six, eight months ago where they had a, they had a pretty nasty data breach. And it, I mean, we spoke about it. Um, I'm assuming they fixed it then, but it, it's still there. But they were one of the first to say, this is free. And because parents used it, or that was the one that everyone heard about, that was the one that got picked up. So they offered it free. It magically got pushed onto my school device for whatever reason. So I was happy. So that's what my son does his work on. And, and look, for what it's worth, I'm pretty happy with it. Google Meet also came out, but if you didn't know what Google Meet was, you can thank Google for that. It's on their G Suite product. So you have to have be a G Suite member and it was paid and now it's not paid and you have to download something different instead of just going through Hangouts like every other normal person and, and everything else. My, for a service that people don't hear about, it's hard to gain traction. But again, they're doing this so you gain traction and then you buy the product. It's it's a four month free trial. So Zoom, so Zoom's the big one that they're talking about, and there's a whole bunch of clickbait articles about saying how Zoom tracks everything you do, and that's not true. They do track. They have we're going to talk about attend uh, attendee uh, attention tracking, so the host can see if the host turns it on if you're paying attention or not, I mean, okay. Um, and a lot of the stuff goes with the host. So, so all that stuff that they're going to see everything, that's not true. They can see if you're listening or not, this is the host, but zoom also has the right to collect some data about the computer and everything else, but I don't think it's as far as what they're saying. Yeah, there, there is a decent amount of a clickbait around zoom in particular. And, uh, one of the nasty things people do bring up and not, 
not nasty as in they're being nasty, but nasty as in it was kind of a nasty, nasty problem, uh, was that uh, they did install a local web server on your system that could be leveraged by malware to do really nasty things uh, to your system just willy-nilly. Any website could run arbitrary commands and just have a day with it. Now, that has since been fixed. Uh, the things that are still around, um, like you said, attendee attention tracking. Now, uh, what this means is that if you don't have the Zoom window pulled up and focused, uh, the host, if they turn it on, uh, can see that, yeah, you've tabbed out of the window. Uh, they can even see the list of running applications in Windows on your computer. Uh, so that's not great. Uh, you know, you can imagine, like, if, if you're in school and somebody's got Minecraft pulled up along with the lesson, right? You probably want to know that. But I don't necessarily want a list of my windows just, you know, thrown around everywhere. So we got Audacity and, and Twitch so I can keep an eye on the video feed and what you should know about online tools and, and this, this streaming software we're using, right? It's, it's absolutely a privacy invasion, but it is up to the host to turn this on. Um, I, I don't like that it's even an option, but... It is what it is. I mean, can we write some anti thing that just f fills it up with fake applications to inundate them? I'm I'm definitely sure we could absolutely do that. Well, you could make uh, really because uh, you can control web page titles very easily just by altering the the HTML or, or making your own custom pages that you double click on. You could have windows open that say horrible, awful things and, and ship that off to Zoom too. So if you want to have a little bit of fun and you know somebody's tracking, um, yeah, play around with that. It'll be good. And uh, by the way, not that I'm, uh, not that I would like to cause a problem, but I don't know what kind of sanitization uh, they do as far as uh, window title input goes. So, you know, maybe high Unicode characters, some weird UTF-8 stuff you could sneak in there. See what happens. Bobby drop tables? Can we Bobby, Bobby drop tables? <laughs> yep. <laughs> we could, um, uh... <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah. so that was the first thing. And I'm sure Zoom on the back end is collecting data because obviously they want to make their streaming things better. And look, I did. The first thing I did when I heard that my son was going to use Zoom was check it. And, and from what they said, basically, we're, basically they said, hey, look, we understand that now all these schools are using us. So we're going to do our best to comply, but we do have to take statistics. We do have to do this for our own network and logs, but we promise that we're not going to use this maliciously. And for me, for this, look, for what we're dealing with and everything else, that seemed like, okay, they at least said the right thing. They updated it on, on March 20th. So it wasn't like three years ago. They updated right away. And they said, hey, they said, what's going on? So for me, that's one thing. I mean, I'm more, con I'm not even that concerned. Yeah, like, uh, like a host checking what I'm doing because, okay, they're going to call me out. Okay. Like you said, then I'll start creating funky window titles for that. I just don't want, like you said, putting a web server in and, and putting malicious stuff on the computers. That That's the thing that gets me. Now, Now I, I think all that stuff has been fixed, but we still remember that. There is a way around, um, not, not all of this tracking, obviously, but a, a small amount of like the on-computer tracking. Um, Zoom does allow you to join meetings with just a web browser, which has a lot of protections for your computer uh, that the Zoom client software purposefully does not have. Uh, now, how you do this is when you join a Zoom meeting, they offer you a download. They say, here you go, here's a thing, please download and install it, and then you can join this meeting. You don't have to. It's actually a really nasty dark pattern that they have because they get a lot more data by embedding themselves into your computer. Uh, and they do use all of that data. Now. Is it evil? Sure. Does every company want to do it? Absolutely. Um, so <laughs> um, what you can do is when they provide you that download, just smack their hand, cancel the download and say, no, I'm not going to download or install anything. Then they will let you join a meeting from the web browser. Uh, they hide the option. They make you cancel a download to do it. And it's absolutely a user hostile dark pattern uh, that you should absolutely take advantage of. If you can call in, I would absolutely call it if you don't need to be yep. there. Call in because what what what's the use of of uh, just you sitting there? And yes, 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 yes. This sounds good. Like doing all the stuff. If you can call in 
absolutely call it. Yep. So that way, that's the way more tip. private. And if you have a cordless phone with a mute button, that's even better. So uh, yeah. let's see. Next was uh, HIPAA. So my sister calls me up and said, I can't wait for all of this other stuff. And we have telehealth. Why didn't we have it? And I said, privacy. And she goes, why? Well, who cares? And I said, yeah, if that data leaks out, especially to the insurance companies. I mean, guess who writes some of these apps? The insurance companies literally write these telehealth apps. Like, you could get a Marahealth or Kaiser Permanente. You could talk to a doctor. They literally get that data. So you're trusting the insurance company that you're paying premiums to to not get sick to keep this private. Now, whether they do or don't, I have no idea. But I'm just putting it out there. So you hear the president talking about they're gonna they're gonna lower HIPAA standards, and that in my mind, I, I want to scream because I don't want HIPAA protections to go down unless there is no HIPAA protections to begin with and they're just arbitrary. But if there's actual real protections there, I want them there. And like you said, like we said pre-show, if it this shouldn't be that hard because if you're just talking to your doctor or a doctor, what's the problem? The, as, as far as I'm concerned, the protections you get with a plain old telephone system phone call to a doctor should be roughly analogous to doing a, a web RTC over, over a TLS link, right? So full, full encryption to the endpoints should be the same amount of privacy, realistically speaking. Um, now that said, if the end server is actually recording the stuff you're doing or um, you know collecting it and storing it for whatever reasons, maybe medical record reasons, uh, then yeah, that's absolutely dangerous. That is volatile, like radioactive data that you're now holding and, and you gotta get rid of it. You either have to get rid of it or figure out a way to store it very, very securely uh, from now till the end of time because that's how long this data is going to last uh, did you uh I, I love when you go to the doctor and it says can we leave a message on your phone check can can do we do can we tell who list the people you will allow us to talk to all these funny stuff and and i have to remember oh that's because of hipaa like yeah hey or the pharmacist calls is uh your wife there and it's like who is this i can't tell you because these are all HIPAA provisions, but yeah. but again, it's the it's the it's. I would love telehealth to be a thing. I would love when when daycare calls my son out because he has pink eye that I don't have to go to the doctor. Right now, I have to go to the the walk in clinic. I have to wait for my wife to come home to watch one of them to go to the walk in clinic. Get wait there, whatever forty five minutes. They say, "Yep, pink eye," and then you have to go get a prescription and do the whole thing. I just wish that you can just whip out, do like FaceTime it and be done with it. But I get it. So one, one of the, uh, we did have a call out, uh, which is really good. And I want to make sure we mention um, that uh, modern PBX systems can record calls really, really easily. Uh, and that's probably one of the reasons why whenever you call any healthcare professional, especially if they work in a call center, they start the, the line with uh, this call may be recorded or this call will be recorded for quality assurance purposes. Um, just to let you know up front that something somewhere could or is being collected at some point in time blanket statement let's indemnify ourselves uh you are absolutely being recorded um, and in case you weren't aware my co-host uh this conversation may or may not be recorded for quality and podcasting purposes i mean new jersey is a one-party state so i don't even need to let you know that okay i'm so glad. So, but again, it's, uh, so you have telehealth and I, I really do want it to pick up, but I do not want to reduce the privacy standards associated with it because again, I'm terrified of the insurance companies getting this and we've spoken a ton about this, like a ton. So, so I want to move on to just, just general like tools that you can, that, that you should just, just be aware of. Just general tools that you should be aware for. Yeah. So just because they're offering something free doesn't obviously make it good. Uh, a lot of people are banding together. You're hearing about this all over. We're making medical supplies and everything else. So yes, big thumbs up. But just just be aware for the scams. Be aware for all that stuff. And and just just remember, you don't want to reduce privacy because it will always be reduced. Just for this, you can't just do it for this one time because next year there'll be another this one time and the year after that will be another this one time. 
And I want to just bring us back to the Patriot Act, where we said uh, after 9-11, make sure this never happens again. And this is where that slippery slope went down. And well, now we're we're at that time again. What, what do we want to do? And you have to remember that we gave Congress certain rights and the three-letter agencies to do it. So you just want to be careful. And and I, I don't want to scare people because I think the majority of companies now are just trying their best to help everyone out. We all have kids. We all want them to learn. We all are in this together. We are all self-quarantined. We all want to work from home. We want to do this. But we do not want to give our data out somewhere else. The lawyers. Oh, I saw this. A lot of people said, hey, lawyers, if you work from home, make sure you turn off your smart assistants because that's privileged information. One of those things that you never think about. But I said, wait a second. So, yes, I had to tell my wife uh, how to turn off, how to mute the, the, the all the cylinders. <sighs> The um, you know, with with social distancing, people are trying to reach to online tools to you know collaborate to really just be social. And even though we talk about Signal a lot, and it's not really a, a workplace tool, if you want to uh, talk to your friends, have phone calls, uh, I think they do video chat now. Um, you know, I I, I think they do, uh, but you know. Stuff in Signal is end-to-end -end encrypted. It does protect and respect your privacy. And uh, really, it's fantastic to use. Uh, WhatsApp also uses a Signal protocol for end-to-end -end encryption. So that's also a, a decent choice. Um, yeah, you, you can still virtually hang out with your friends. You can still have virtual brunch where uh, we're all eating our, our government-issued rations uh, in the year 2024 when uh, society has collapsed and it's the zombie apocalypse out there. But you still want to have brunch every Sunday. Signal is perfect for that. I will say what's also perfect is Keybase. If all your friends are yep. trying to determine on some sort of chat platform and find some... If, if no one can agree on one, somebody just throw out Keybase and make everyone download a whole new platform and just start from there. Because whether it's Slack, I do like Microsoft Teams. I will give them a shout out. I really, really do like Microsoft Teams. Uh, if you'd have none of them, try Keybase. It's free. And sometimes you get some random <laughs> cryptocurrency thrown your way. Yeah, that, that got weird for a little bit. Uh, I, I will second. I really like Keybase. I like the Keybase team. I think they're they're rad and they're building cool stuff. But that cryptocurrency thing was just weird, man. Somebody I mean, paid me the other day. So yeah. I, I got like 0 0.000001 whatever. Yep. And I was hoping the value went up, but because of the market, it also went down. But Yeah. Yeah. It, it was at like 100 bucks, I think, is my total. And then it crashed down to 50. So I don't know. I wasn't really going to do anything with it anyway. Uh, I'm going to keep it. Don't beg me for crypto coins. It's not going to happen, but not planning on using it. It's my apocalypse fund. The uh, So basically, Keybase is encrypted. They go through all their stuff. They show you they have uh, they have a paper blockchain. Like you can make, it's like on paper. So you can follow all that stuff. It has encrypted, you like it better for Git. Um, but just chat in general and files and all this other good stuff. So, so I, I, if, if no one can agree on WhatsApp or signal or whatever else, try Keybase. Keybase is, is pretty cool. And what's really nice about Keybase is the opposing side doesn't actually have to have Keybase to receive an encrypted message. If you know, you know, someone, uh, if you know them on some kind of social platform, generally Keybase has an integration for that. And you can just say, hey, let me send this person a message on Twitter. And then they'll get a notification that says, hey, to receive this, you actually have to install Keybase and then go through all that stuff. But to initially send it, they don't actually have to have anything except some presence on some website somewhere on the internet. Uh, yep. Keybase will find them. And let's just end with our, our couple public service announcements. We do have a WhatsApp group. If you want to join us, if you want, we were going to have a random meeting. We couldn't agree on a platform, but we were going to say, let's have a Zoom meeting. And Tom said, uh, and I agree with him. He is right. But again, as as the news is dominated by uh, COVID-19, there's no security news, which I guess is a good thing. But we get bored. So we're talking about privacy. I don't know what we're going to have next week, but 
hopefully something, but get into the WhatsApp group. Try, we, we spoke about this last time, try something new, break something, try to fix it as long as it's not like production value. But we're there and uh, I don't know, I guess we're done. So I have nothing else. Yeah, that's that's all I've got. Um, if you join the WhatsApp group, feel free to ask me about video game recommendations. Uh, it's quite literally the my only pastime. I play lots of video games and lots of VR games. So uh, yeah, feel free to ask. And if just again, if you have any supplies to donate to uh, medical professionals, they need that. If uh... yep. If hand sanitizer, any- masks, gloves. Yeah. Uh, if you if you know a tattoo artist who is clearly out of work because they can't be around people right now, uh, usually they've got gloves and masks and stuff you know in stock as part of the business. Uh, you know, reach out to them, get them to donate to a local hospital because you know uh, people who are donating stuff. Yeah, they're also helping the heroes on the front lines trying to protect us all. Uh, sure. And if if anything, if if you can't do anything, do nothing. This is the like literally the only time in my life where I can remember somebody saying, "Hey, do something by doing nothing. Stay at home, watch Netflix, hang out in your sweatpants, listen to a, an awesome security podcast. Like, get lazy with it. This is the time. Our time is now, lazy people. We can do something by doing <laughs> absolutely nothing. Lazy join people up, unite. <laughs> join up and and you know, uh, join with me. Let's let's do nothing. Let's hang out on the couch in our sweatpants and an electric blanket and just watch The Office for the fifth time today. Did uh, what's it. it called? Did Disney Plus offer free for a couple months? Uh, I don't know if it's free. I know they're releasing some uh, in theater movies early on the service, like a month after they hit theaters. I, I guess if theaters are still a thing right now. Look, now is the time to up your uh, your streaming subscriptions because you're literally doing nothing, and just get them all out of the way. Just start watching and watching and watching and watching. And I thought I saw Disney Plus for free. I, I it may be, maybe something else. So, with that's it. That's it. I got nothing else for now. Yep. So that's anyway, all I got. I will see you later. We'll see you ne- hopefully next week. Bye, everyone. See ya. Off. Yeah, the Twitch stream looked really good. Uh, let me go ahead and kill the Twitch stream. Thank you all for joining in live. I'm putting over here because the window's over here, but the camera's right here. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully we'll be back next next week. Hopefully. Sometime. Yeah, hopefully. See you, everyone.